Hey guys, it's BNB again in another video. It's the time for those who asked me about the LabVIEW. In this video, we will learn some about new software, guys, which is the LabVIEW from the National Instrument Company. So you can visit the official website of that company through www.ni.com. In the website formation, we have four major sections. The first one is Solutions. National Instruments offer some industry and measurement solutions and suggests for you some applications. The second session is the products. It combines both hardware and software products. Then we have the support section, which contains the technical support for some of the National Instrument products like the LabVIEW and National Instrument Visa. The last section is the most important one. It's the community section, where you can ask questions if you need some help and have an accessible discussion forum. Or you can connect with the virtual user groups. And you have the ability to share your projects or to use other users' projects. Well guys, before starting the setup and the configuration and all that stuff, we need to know first what is LabVIEW. And this is why I choose to read quickly a paragraph mentioned in Wikipedia. It's written that LabVIEW, short for laboratory, so lab for laboratory and view, it's not, it's not for view, it's for, stand for virtual instrument engineering workbench. It's a system design platform and development environment for the virtual programming language and let's say for graphical programming language because in the LabVIEW software we will not use the C, the C++ or the Java programming language because it will be more about virtual components or the graphical components so you will use the graphical components to program the process and it's from the natural instruments as we saw the graphical language is named G not to confuse with the G code it's the numeric controlling programming language but here we're talking about the graphical programming language originally released for the Apple Macintosh in 1986 and this is really really important to know that the first edition of this software was intended for the Apple Macintosh. It's good enough to know that LabVIEW is a powerful software. LabVIEW is commonly used for data acquisition, instrument control and industrial automation and we will see in the coming videos how to make all these applications. This software exists in a variety of platforms such as the Microsoft Windows so if you're running with the Microsoft Windows you can set up this software or if you're working with another platform like the Linux or OS X there is no problem with them too. The last version of LabVIEW is LabVIEW 2015 but in this tutorial we will see how to set up the 2013 version because in the coming videos we will see how to add modules and libraries for LabVIEW and with the last version it will be a little bit complicated so a piece of advice just start with the 2013 version and once you find yourself capable to work with LabVIEW and learn more about LabVIEW then you can download and install whatever version you want this paragraph is the most important one but we will get back for it after installing the LabVIEW in this video, we will see how to set up and configure the LabVIEW software and we will try to get familiar with the software interface in general. Also, we will try to make a simple project. And in the comment tutorials, we will see four big chapters which are how to use the different tools existing in LabVIEW, how to add new modules or libraries and how to use them, how to connect an external instrument to LabVIEW like the Arduino and finally we will try to make a SCADA project for LabVIEW. The first thing to do as usual is downloading the setup files. So go to the description of this video and you'll find a link to download a torrent for LabVIEW software and the activator. Open the torrent file and finish the download.
It will take some of the time, but I will not do this because I already have the setup files. So after finishing this part, you will get an image disk. I'm using the Demon Tools Pro to open this kind of files. So try to open the image disk and you will get this folder. Now go to LabVIEW 2013, 32 bits and double click on the setup. The setup window will appear. Click next, then you have to write your name and the organization name. You can write whatever name you want. Click next. Here we need the activator code. You can get one from the activator folder, so go back to that folder and double click on National Instruments License Activator 1.1. Then click option and generate a serial number. And we got one, so copy it and paste it in the blank space. Now click next and set the location where to install the software. not sure if you will read all these instructions, but you have to accept the tool license anyway. If you follow with the steps correctly, the setup will run with no problems. In my case, I installed the LabVIEW and I don't want to lose my modules, so after finishing the install, just go back to the activator folder and activate the LabVIEW. It's too easy, just click on the module and click option, then activate. Or right click on the module and activate it. Now the setup is over and we can run our new software. Then here we are, the lab view is working correctly and we can open the presenting window with no problems. Starting with the options available, we can start by creating new project or just open an existing project. We already have a blank project that we can use it or just go to the menu and check the available options in the file menu like making a new VI, it stands for virtual instrument, is the lab view program subroutine or open an existing VI. You have the same option of creating a new project in the file menu. We will start with creating a new VI. Once you click on it, two windows will appear. Press Ctrl T to see the two windows together. Starting with the front panel is the user interface for the VI and it's built using controls and indicators. Controls are inputs, they allow user to supply information to the VI. When indicators are outputs, they indicate or display the results based on the inputs given to the VI. Moving to the second window, name it the block diagram. It contains the graphical source code. These two windows are the major parts of any VI, with another component, name it icon and connector pane, use it to represent the VI in the block diagram of another. I spoke about the virtual instruments because LabVIEW programs are called virtual instruments or VIs. 
it's because of them appearance and operation imitate physical instruments such as oscilloscopes and multimeters and contains a comprehensive set of tools for acquiring, analyzing, displaying or even storing data as well as tools for troubleshooting. Let's get back to the front panel, I said it's the user interface of the VI. It should be clear, commented and complete to make sure that the users will never have problems while using the VI. This part is made of controls and indicators so to have access to them you must select view controls palette or just right click on the front panel space there and the controls palette will appear the controls palette is broken into various categories you can expose some or all of these categories to suit your needs here we have the boolean controls like the push buttons or boolean indicators like leds the same thing for the numeric format, we have the numeric indicators and numeric controls. There is other kinds of numeric controls and indicators, like the fill slide, the knobs, the meters. So I advise you to try all the parts of this palette, because in this video, we will use only the numeric and boolean format of controls and indicators. But in the coming videos, we will try the rest categories of the controls palette. Let's select a boolean control like the push button and the boolean indicator, the LED. All lab view objects have associated shortcut menus, also known as context menus, pop-up menus and right-click menus. As you create the VI, use the shortcut menu items to change the appearance or behavior of front panel on block diagram objects. To access the shortcut menu, right-click the object. All these options and tools are available on the property dialog box, like the appearance where you can enable or disable the level or change the needle color of the data range, the scale to adjust the size of the component, and the document where you can write comments to explain the function of the used component. After you create the front panel window, you add code using graphical representations of functions to control the front panel objects. This is why front panel objects appear as terminals on the block diagram, with the shortcut menus and all the options existing in the front panel, with some difference for sure. For example, in the block diagram, we can't have access to the controls palette. And when we try to right click, another window will appear, which is functions. This window includes the programming functions, measurements, input-output instruments, mathematics, etc. Let's focus on our boolean test first, so we will use only the programming functions, which contain the structures like the for loop, the while loop, the case structure, and the numeric such as the numeric constant in blue color and the DBA numeric constant represented with the orange color. We have also the boolean constant, it takes the green color and the string data with purple color. From here, we can conclude that the color of the element that we are using depends on the data type of that element. So we can have three class of data type existing in LabVIEW. The first one is the numeric, orange for floating point and blue for the integer. The second category is the boolean with the green color. And the last one is the string category represented with the purple color. A broken wire appears as a dashed black line with a red X in the middle when you try to wire two objects with incompatible data type. Let's start operating the LED with the push button. So first, try to wire them together. This way, the LED will take the state of the push button. Now, we have to run the process through the toolbar buttons. Each window has a toolbar associated with it. Use the front panel window toolbar buttons to run and edit the VI. Click the run button to run a VI. You can run it if the run button appears as a solid white arrow. But when you made some mistakes while wiring or using the functions, the run button will appear broken. In this case, click this button to display the error list window, which lists all the warnings and errors. 
Now if we click the run button we can change the state of the LED because of the high speed execution. So we need to run continuously the process then we can change the state of the LED by manipulating the push button. While the VI runs the abort execution button appears. Click this button to stop the VI immediately if there is no other way to stop the VI. Actually there is another way to run the VI continuously through the while loop function in which you can place a boolean control to stop the execution of the process and a numeric indicator to display the number of iterations. To slow down the speed of the displayed number use the timing function and place a constant for example 300 milliseconds it's the delay between iterations this way we can read easily the displayed number now we have to arrange the front panel and write some commands So the last thing, after finishing the job, don't forget to save your VI. So that's it guys for this video, don't forget to watch the next tutorial in which we'll try to use more functions with different applications. Thank you for watching, it was BMB from Megadas, see you next time.